and welcome back to Carpa Blue Fishing. Um, just quickly wanted to talk about um, the last video and choosing a kayak and kind of the next steps really but before we go on too much um, just a little idea of what we've got coming up so the idea of this is is to do a sort of start to finish not that it ever really finishes but you know getting you on the water kayak fishing we'll have some videos on um, anchoring, anchor trolleys, safety equipment, ideas on how to set the kayak kayak up, um, storage of equipment, all sorts of things I just want to cover in this series of videos. This is part two and it's assuming that you've um, just purchased your, your first kayak. Um, a couple of little tips and bits and pieces to move you forwards. So in the last video we looked at three types of kayaks that um, people generally might want to look at um, if they're considering kayak fishing. If you just recap we had the shorter um, smaller kayak which had some advantages but uh, generally perhaps not the most suitable kayak for, for reasons of um, speed and stability and ease of fishing. Then we looked at probably my recommended starting point which was a 12 to 14 foot um traditional sit on top kayak that we could kit out you know for, for kayak fishing some of them already are you know aimed at the kayak fishing market um i suggested that second hand was a good place to start somebody's already paid for the depreciation if you don't like the hobby or you know you quickly want to change to something else you you're not really going to lose any money and then the end of my kayak fishing journey which was um, a pedal drive kayak and you know the reasons why i changed that now I would have been happy to fish, you know, in that middle bracket that we discussed, that 12 to 14 foot sit on top kayak. However, I just found it a little bit uncomfortable and, you know, my fitness wasn't great. So I, I you know, primarily changed for that reason. Okay, so we've got our first fishing kayak and I, I know you've got dreams of paddling out to the sunset and, you know, pulling out a double figure bass. Now, nothing wrong with that, you know, and that's ultimately where you want to, be aiming towards you know is, is you know catching those fish of your dreams however before we do that let's um, take a sensible look at some of the next things you might want to consider now I, I want you guys to be safe and I want you to enjoy it so you know whatever you do don't go out on the water without a PFD and without a paddle leash they're your two first musts and you know we'll have a whole video on other safety equipment and, and, and bits and pieces you know the sea's quite cold and it's also you know as, as I've touched on sometimes quite unforgiving in terms of tides and, and, and bits and pieces and we look at anchoring and other techniques in the up and coming videos um, so yeah there's, there's going to be a few videos coming so as I said you know subscribe look out for those and um, you know hopefully we'll have something you know for everybody as I say, you're gonna to wanna to get out. So let's let's assume that the most sensible place to start is, you know, in a river or a lake, or, you know, harbour somewhere shallow on a nice calm day. And I'd suggest on that first trip, you know, leaving your gear behind. Going without your fishing tackle and just having a bit of fun. Just, you know, take it for a paddle, explore your area, explore what your kite can do for you you know try and stand up on it try and tip it over fall out of it and then try and get back on it so you know there's lots of videos on self rescue which is the terminology we use for getting back on your kayak search search the internet watch some of these videos um like you're doing now watch some of these videos on different methods and, and bits and pieces to make sure that you can get back on and the reason we're doing this is you know there's going to be nothing worse than paddling out on your first trip and then finding out that you can't turn around, you can't reach something, you can't, you, you know, you can't do what you want, and it's all going to be quite scary, and you, you're not going to be wanting to do it anymore. And you know, it's a little bit daunting at times, um, particularly at first. And you know, that's why we're trying to sort of ease you into a situation where you're more comfortable, confident, and you know, you've got some of those basic skills that you you, you may hopefully never need, but uh, you know, always going to come in useful. The other thing I'd suggest is, you know, we've got our group, it's Sussex Kayak Fishing. You know, there's groups all around the country and from what I've seen, they're all really friendly. You know, it's the friendliest fishing community out there, I'm sure it is. Um, so, 
just go with somebody. Get, you know, buddy up with somebody in your area. Just put up where you're from. Put it up that you're new to it. And just say, anybody want to take me out for a first trip? Anyone want to give me company? And, you know, most of us are willingly, you know, give up our time to, you know, share some of our experiences. Now, there's not anybody out there that knows it all, you know, and every 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 trip i think i i learn a little bit more you know 160 odd trips in now and um i'm i'm still enjoying it and i'm still picking up bits and pieces and you know there's always something something new something different somewhere different to go different marks different places and that brings me on to something you know knowing your area knowing you know, what the tide does, how fast is it? Are you gonna be able to paddle to it? Perhaps use the tide to paddle your journey. You know, so you're going with the tide and the tide's also bringing you back. So if you go either side of, you, you know, one tide, then you, you know it's always gonna be bringing you back in the opposing direction in the very near future, just in case you've got into difficulty. You look at a tide card, is it a big tide for that particular area? Is it, a, you know, what we call spring tide or is it a neat tide? And you know, above and beyond, beyond, look at the weather and, and just make sure that you're going out in a settled period of weather. So, you know, what's the weather not only doing that day but either side of it, you know, initially. And as you, you know, go out more often and you look at more and more forecasts, you're gonna, you're gonna have a bit of an understanding of what that means for you in your different areas. Okay, so I was asked to recommend some kayaks for people to start on now. It's not that I'm uncomfortable doing that, but I always think that you should always remark from your own experiences, really. And as currently, I've, I've only owned three kayaks. I've, I've paddled a few others. Uh, so I can only really recommend what I see other people using. Now, there are some that I particularly like the look of, and I know the guys that fish from them, are, are, you know, fish from them very effectively. So... There's a couple that I can suggest. There's also others that I know that are very popular within the kite fishing community. So we'll take a quick look at those. Okay, so we look at a few kites that, that people are either using or that are quite popular. Now, you will see, I think, something that's very similar throughout these kites in terms of, you know, the, the general shape, hole design and, and, and stuff like that. A lot of them are very similar or carry similarities. So. It certainly give you an idea of the sort of thing that we're looking at. So, in no particular order, um, Galaxy Sturgeon. Now, I've had one of these, and as I say, it's, it's, it's a pretty good kayak. Now, these these two kayaks I really do like. So, this is a Viking Pro Fish and a Viking Reload. Now, I, I fish with a, a couple of lovely guys that use these all the time. Um, very effective, very 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 nice paddle kites so I can recommend these ones so ocean kayaks they do a number of kayaks such as the Prowler 13 uh, the big game there's there's several there that you might want to take a look at and tarpon do a few that look quite nice I haven't really any personal experience with these but I'm sure they're very good and capable kayaks and then there's countless you know hundreds of other different types of brands, lots of Chinese ones and bits and pieces. So you can see the choice, but hopefully having a little look at some of those might give you a bit of an idea of the sort of thing that we're looking for. As part of this series, we're gonna look at anchoring, the anchor setups, the anchor trolley, things that people generally might not quite get right. Some of these mistakes I've made myself, some of them I've seen others make. It's one of the things that I think generally as a newcomer, people find a little bit confused and just while I'm doing that next, and that would be followed then by some safety equipment, um, some kayak tours and, and bits and pieces like that. So if you want to see this kind of information, it'd be less of me talking or certainly more of me showing in the next few videos. So please like and subscribe. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for taking time to watch. Cheers.